All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. This is the uh, Wednesday wake-up call, okay? Halfway through the week, we're going to talk about current events as um, they tie into biblical prophecy. All right, um, first we're going to start off with, oh, fair use, fair use, okay? There's going to be some videos that we're going to watch, but it's uh, protected by the Fair Use Act to um, as a teaching moment, Okay. So we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. At this point in time, um, the uh, abominations are everywhere in America. You know, you have the, the Baconators on every fast food uh, restaurant, um, pork and everything, lard. You know, um, you have to really be diligent in looking at your food and what you put in. But now they even put stuff in your body. Um, we're talking about the the man that had the kidney replacement by the pig. You know, uh, like the sister said, you know, he is like pretty much unclean at all times. Okay, well, he didn't make it. You know what I mean? Um, big surprise, but uh, we're going to talk about that. Let's bring that out. First Corinthians chapter three and verse 16. John, this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 16. When everybody get it, say con. 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 Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh, and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you. Con, you're the temple of the Most High God. Go ahead. Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of Yahweh, him shall Yahweh destroy. For the temple of Yahweh is holy. Which temple ye are? All right. So um, big difference, you know, uh, between, you know, let's get uh, 2 Maccabees 7 verse 2. Big, big difference between these brothers that um, laid down their life to not eat anything abominable to somebody that put uh, an abominable organ in his body. And um, we're going to look at first the initial report. You know, it looked like a good idea. You know, as far as what they were pushed out to the people, they're like, well, this is the best idea in the world. You know, it's a GMO pig kidney being put in this man. It'll stop him from dialysis. And, you know, we can look at all the implications of the future, what we could do with other organs and making the organs and this, then the third. We... Even though it's dangerous, we 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 critiqued it, and the certain amount of um, whatever like connectors, uh, uh, I'm not saying the right word, but connectors from an organ to a person have been um, uh, scientifically manipulated, and this is a great idea. So let's look at the first video. Um. You know, and it's a lot. It's when you look at the look it up on YouTube, it's a bunch of videos that they have talking about what a great idea this is. But then when come to find out the guy dies, you know, it's Jake. You know, um when Jake Sorry, this Slocky, when Jake dies, you don't see too many videos about that. So it's kind of like the first the front page news, it's a great idea, everybody should do it. And then, you know, page 35, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, the guy died a couple of weeks later. All right. And, of course, you're not gloating or happy that the brother died. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's our brother. You know what I'm saying? So. But look how Esau really promotes this. OK, and let's get. um. Uh, second Mac could be seven and two on deck. All right. Uh, so let's get this video. Inside this Mass General operating room, a medical milestone. For the first time, a team of doctors transplanted a genetically modified pig kidney into a 62-year-old man whose previously donated kidney failed and was struggling on dialysis. This is cortical. Dr. Leo Riella first suggested a pig kidney, knowing the patient could not wait for a human one. 
Of the 100,000 people in the U.S. on transplant waiting lists, the vast majority need kidneys. Most of our patients have to wait for an organ from the deceased donor list. And unfortunately, if they have to stay years on dialysis, that means their health is going to continue to deteriorate. Our immune systems typically reject foreign tissue. But through cutting-edge CRISPR technology from eGenesis, this pig kidney had 69 genomic edits to improve compatibility and to reduce the risk of infection from viruses. Still, animal-to-human transplants are riddled with unknowns, including how long the pig kidney will last. But so far, the patient's nephrologist says the results appear promising. He has a, the surgery on Saturday. And we think he's on track for discharge this coming Saturday. So within a week? Within a week. In a statement, the patient said, I saw it not only as a way to help me, but a way to provide hope for the thousands of people who need a transplant to survive. We need a permanent solution. And dialysis was never made to be a permanent solution. Could it essentially make dialysis obsolete? That's our goal. Emily Ikeda, NBC News, Boston. Okay, so... Um, that's what happened in Boston. In Boston, all right. Matter of fact, you started verse one, second Maccabees seven, verse one. Con, this is the second book of Maccabees in the Apocrypha, chapter seven and verse one. When those get it, say con, 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 and it came to pass. Also, that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. Huh, so they're, they're, you know, beating them into submission, right? Um, if you haven't read this chapter, I definitely recommend it. It talks about really how um, steadfast and, and focused our ancestors were you know everybody wasn't um just living you know uh do as thou wilt and uh sinning willfully you know it was brothers that weren't having it okay go ahead can we verse two verse two but one of them that spake first said thus what wouldest thou ask or learn of us we are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Huh. So, you know, the ready to die, you know, and um that's the ancestors that we come from. Okay, let's go to uh first Maccabees chapter one and verse sixty-three. And it wasn't just the the sons, the seven sons, it was the mother as well. You know what I'm saying? Our people were really uh focused on following these laws, statutes, commandments, even at the point um and the threat of death. All right, uh, let's bring that out. First Maccabees chapter one, verse 63. John, this is the first book of Maccabees in the Apocrypha. Chapter one and verse 63. When those get it, say con. 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 Wherefore, though rather to die, that they might not be defiled with meat and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died. Huh. So, you know, the, the Edomites, they know, you know what I mean? Um, they get us in our sin, our, our protection, uh, you know, dwindles, right? So what they do, they make us, they make us sin, you know what I'm saying? By eating defiled meats, so forth and so on. Our ancestors were, so um you know zealous for the law they're like i'd rather die okay but now look what we got you know what i mean um opportunity arise to get off dialysis and the brother goes straight to the pig kidney you know what i mean and you see how they make a big deal about it like you know they want us to have that uh perpetual uncleanness in us you know what i mean forever unclean like the sister said you know what i mean um and they make a big deal it's on the abc nbc da 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 but of course, when bad things happen, which they inevitably do, they really don't um, talk too much about that. Let's go to Jeremiah 16, verse 17, and play the next clip.
the local man who received the world's first kidney transplant from a pig has died. Rick Slayman received the groundbreaking transplant at Mass General Hospital. He left the hospital a month ago, and at the time, Slayman said he was happy to get a clean bill of health and hopeful to live life without the burden of dialysis. The 62-year-old from Weymouth had end-stage kidney disease. No word on his cause of death. Mass General doctors are currently working with the FDA to begin clinical trials involving pig kidneys. My boy Don called me. He's like, oh, slack you. What they say, uh, we don't know how he died. You know, we're not, we're not one hundred percent sure. You know, could could have been the pig kidney, you know, but could have been something else. Could have pre existing conditions. See, that's how uh um proud and evil these devils are. You know, they know what killed him. You know, but they're not going to admit it, and they're going to continue on with the process of putting pig kidneys or pig hearts or pig whatever lungs into humans. And, you know, they're going to talk about what an amazing experience this is and how it's, you know, uh, um, science is far and beyond, you know, what we can imagine, but people are going to be dying. So what's so good? What's what's the the benefit of that? Um, It's not there. Yeah. OK, let's go to Judith, chapter five, verse 17. That's the lock. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jeremiah. No. No, uh, hold Jeremiah, it's lucky. Car, car. Hold Jeremiah, and we'll go to Judith. It's a good account of, you know, um, what happens when we follow the law of such commandments and when we don't, you know, and that the the, other, um, the nations know this. So when you got it, you can bring it out, Judith 5 and 17. This is the book of Judah. Chapter 5 and verse 17. When those get it, say con. 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 And whilst they sin not before their God, they prospered because Yahweh that hateth iniquity was with them. Con. So the Most High knows, you know, um, when, when we stay away from sin, when we depart from sin, he's with us, he helps us, and we prosper. Go ahead. Con, verse 18. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of Yahweh was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies huh. and you know that's how we got where we're at now so this has been uh, a process of us sinning uh, us going in captivity and the most high saving us from that captivity now of course this is the last captivity so we gotta make sure that we are extremely focused and, and you know we don't you know uh, another shot's not coming you know it's not another captivity this is it all right go ahead Con. Verse 19, but now are they returned to Yahweh and are Salakia and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Con, go ahead. Con, verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor. If there be any error against this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. Right, so this is how they were thinking back then. And this is how they think now. You know, that's why you got like talking about earlier, bacon haters, bacon on everything, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, having us break the Sabbath, not even know what day is the Sabbath, you know, it's very crafty counsel to get us uh, in the sin so they can overcome us. Go on, go on, read 21. John, verse 21, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, let their Lord defend them and their God be for them 
and we become a reproach before all the world. God. So when we're when we're not sinning, we're winning. When we're in sin, it's a losing battle all the way. Con. So let's go uh to back to Jeremiah 16 and verse 17. Bubba Gashar. Con, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16 and verse 17. When those get it, say con. 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 For my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. Con, go ahead. Verse 18. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable and abominable things. Con, so the most high is not with these uh, uh detestable and abominable things. Okay, the most high, you know, calls us to be holy for he's holy. You know what I mean? We're set apart. Um touching unclean things, eating unclean things, putting unclean things in our body is um not the way the most high intended it to be okay and with that bad things happen now let's see what's happening with red lobster okay and while we get that let's also get luke 21 and verse 25 So this is a story on Red Lobster. My boy Don called me. He's like, oh, yeah, uh, you should come in right now. I was like, why? I'm off today. He was like, man, you just need to come in because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. But what corporate did tell them? We had three days to clean out the restaurant. Uh, 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 Blindsided as the restaurant abruptly closed 50 locations nationwide. <laughs> Possible Chapter Eleven Bankruptcy. Stop. What say? Nineteen million during the first nine months, two thousand twenty-three. Loss, no profit. All right. So one thing we can see that uh, there's endless shrimp. That um. They weren't making any profit doing things like that. Okay. And hold Luke 21 and 25. We're going to keep going with this video. And it talks about the sun and the things that's going on with that. What's up, guys? Breaking news as we've had yet another massive solar flare, an X8 class solar flare that occurred within the last 45 minutes. There is an Earth directed component regarding this massive flare, and I'll explain how. Looking at the ionosphere D region, you, you can see the daylight side of the Earth was affected almost instantly by the recent massive flare. Coming over here to spaceweather.com. No sooner than this new article got posted, there was an X8 solar flare. And in this article, um, they talk about how the massive sunspot that created the historic aurora outbreak around the world, which is right there, 3664, they've compared that to the Carrington event sunspot of 1859. And the aurora show that we saw was one of the top that we've seen on Earth in the last 500 years. But anyway, this article that was just written right before the X8 solar flare, check this out. Here's why this matters. Protons are raining down on the Earth. 
Giant sunspot AR3664 is no longer facing the Earth. That makes it extra dangerous. Right now, the Carrington-class sunspot is passing over the sun's western limb, a region of the sun that is magnetically connected to our planet. Indeed, we are feeling the effects of that connection. Take a look at this map of ongoing radio blackouts. And this is the ionosphere, DRAP, they call this the, the D region, and it's full of protons and energy from the, the recent CMEs. This is going to continue for days, but check this out. Red zones in the map show where shortwave radio signals are being absorbed. Frequencies below 20 megahertz are almost completely blacked out. A nuisance for long-distance aviators and AM radio operators. What's causing this? Protons accelerated by solar flares and the magnetic canopy of AR3664 are following the Parker spiral back to the Earth. Think of it as a magnetic superhighway. Arriving particles are funneled by our planet's magnetic field towards the poles where they ionize the atmosphere and interfere with transmission of shortwave radio signals. The polar cap absorption event could last for days. Check this out, especially if it's boosted by more flares from AR3664 that we're still magnetically connected to. This is a dangerous active region loaded with sunspots reminiscent of the Carrington event. And yes, right after this article was written, an X8 solar flare occurred. So this energy is indeed going to be bolstered very, very heavily. And I was going to talk about that in my next video about all this energy that's being absorbed by the Earth and every creature on the Earth. What that's generating, what you see on that graph, is a very severe proton storm that's now going to last even longer than prior to the X8 that just occurred. Looking at the Parker spiral, you can see where AR3664 was right over here on this side of the sun. This is the sun, the yellow orb, the green orb is the Earth. See the spiral here that goes back and connects to the Earth? That's the magnetic superhighway that he was talking about. It just produced a brand new X8 class solar flare that's so new, it's not even on any of these graphs yet. It's right there. You can see it just occurred. It was a high speed solar flare, very fast, going up to almost X10 range, which would easily have been the, the strongest of solar cycle 25. Looking at the planetary K index right now, it's all quiet, but anticipating the arrival of one of the most recent X-class solar flares, not counting the X-8 that just occurred again less than an hour ago. So will Earth be able to handle all of this energy that's currently swarming the Earth and the new energy that's on its way from the dangerous active region, AR3664, more high octane energy is earthbound. I'll keep you guys updated as the situation unfolds. Thanks for watching. Have super All right. So let's bring that out. Luke chapter 21 and verse 25. Khan, this is the book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 25. When those get it, say Khan. Khan. Con. 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 And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Con. So, you know, the signs in the sun is pretty major because uh, this, some, this is something that happens every day. These uh, solar flares, as you can see, um, you can look it up online or YouTube or whatever. The uh, northern lights, the quote, alleged northern lights, they're in the south. They're everywhere. Uh, um, you know, over there in Australia, um, Europe, Africa, all these different places. And now a um a very large x8.8 .8 solar flare occurred and we're pretty much being rained down by protons and this isn't something that is incredibly normal you know and just looking at it um from you know like when a full moon happens different things it it affects different people you know um that's why you People will call lunatics because during the lunar cycle, 
you know, if a full moon happens, they can kind of not act like themselves. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe act more like themselves. You know what I'm saying? Um, however you look at it. Uh, and I think now is a time where people are, um, it's being harder and harder for them to carry on with the mask, with the illusion, um, their game face. And, you know, the spirits are manifesting, you know what I mean? They're, they're showing themselves. And um, I noticed that just driving around, uh, people are really taking risk, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know, always, a lot of people always go through red lights and stuff like that. But now, like, people are really taking risks and um, taking things a step above and beyond, okay? And um, we got a couple of those videos of what Eve was doing. Eve has been making the news lately in Philadelphia and, like, crashing out, though. You know what I'm saying? He's, like, really crash out scenarios. Let's go to James chapter one and verse 19. Um, so how is the sun affecting people? Some people have been comment, commenting and saying that they've been sleeping a lot lately, uh, really tired. Um, some people have been, you know, having an abundance of energy, you know, um, seems like it, it affects people differently, you know, and it seems like some people are really taking this time to destroy other human beings you know what i'm saying eve in particular in these next couple uh videos so i would think it's a uh, very important to pretty much um you know find out why you're feeling the way you are like if you're feeling um be, be conscious of your emotions be conscious of how uh you you um you you know let information affect you you know just be aware of yourself in this time period because people are being affected and some people a lot of people are very unconscious of their emotions and uh the reason why they move the way they move so don't be like that you know what i mean if you if you find out that you're being a little jumpy a little edgy uh having anxiety, you know, depression, you know, it could be because it is a bunch of protons falling on your forehead. You know what I'm saying? This is literally stardust, you know, that's, that's what it is. You know what I mean? So, um, just be aware of your emotions in, uh, in these, this coming week and it's probably going to keep on going. So just be aware. Okay. But, uh, let's bring that out. James chapter one and verse 19. Con. This is the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 19. When those get it, say con. 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 Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Huh. So swift to hear, hear out the situation, hear what's going on. You know what I mean? Before you react and start talking back, just listen first, right? And we'll say slow to wrath, slow to uh, immediate violence, slow to, you know, um, just, just you know, uh, quick to uh, react negatively to any given situation. Can you read verse 20? Don, verse 20. For the wrath of men worketh not the righteousness of God. Kind. Ah. So this is uh, going the opposite of the way Yahweh Hashem Al Shai wants us to go. Okay, so this next video uh, is Eve. Eve crashing out. Released surveillance video shows two women Philadelphia police are searching for in connection to a deadly shooting. Investigators say they were involved in a fight before opening fire inside of the federal deli market last night here in Point Breeze. A 35 year old man was pronounced dead. Action News reporter Andy McCormick live at the scene with an emotional interview with the victim's family. Annie. 
and Rick, we moved over to police headquarters, but that surveillance video that you're talking about was released late today by Philadelphia police. It shows the suspected shooter and also a person of interest standing near that victim inside of the store. Police did not release the video that actually shows the shooting, but at the end, you do see those two females running from the scene. It don't make any sense. A father is trying to make sense of his son's murder. Yesterday evening, Shabreen Davis got the call that his 35-year-old son, Tyrese Jerry, was shot to death. These are two women police are looking for in connection to his murder. The one on the left with braids is a suspected shooter. Police say the two women got into an argument with Jerry while inside the federal deli market at 20th and Federal Street in Point Breeze. Police say for some reason it escalated to a fight. And that's when we know one of the females pulled a handgun and fired at least five shots, striking the 35-year-old male victim at least four times, three times in the torso, once in the leg. The shooting happened around 630 Monday evening and spilled out into the intersection of 20th and Federal Streets. Both women fled. It happened almost next door to the 17th police district and a fire station. This morning, the owners of the store fixed a broken glass door shattered by gunfire. He was a nice young man. He had five children. So I'm mainly worried about that. Very heartbreaking. You know, I lost my son. You know, anybody who, you know, it's hard for anybody who to lose a son. Um, he should be burying me, not me there. And police say that both women are known to frequent that area, even that store. Of course, police say if you have any information, contact 215-686-TIPS with every homicide. And they probably live like down the street, probably in there every day. You know what I mean? Um. It's literally right across the street from the police station. Like you could go outside and look to your left and the police station's right there. You know what I'm saying? So this is like crashing out off the of argument um, that, you know, uh, five shots, you know what I mean? Um, that, that man is not coming back. So those two women are going to go to jail for the rest of their life. You know, the other one, they might be best friends or uh, maybe more likely... Uh, together you know what i'm saying that that one woman looked kind of kind of masculine if you will you know what i'm saying so but what's she going to do is she going to um turn on her friend lover whatever for uh not the the you know the hope of not going to jail for the rest of their life so seem like crash out season um is definitely in in uh full effect right now let's go to proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19 Okay, so that's why you got to, you know, take a deep breath and argument and, you know, shooting people is is not the way to go, you know, but this is how this particular uh, woman is going to sum up her life, pretty much going to prison for the rest of her life for shooting somebody that was unarmed. Excellent camera quality right across the street from the uh, the, the the police station. So, you know, the police really want to get this person because it's kind of like almost disrespect. Like, y'all don't even realize that a cop could be coming to work at that time, uh, leaving, dropping off a perpetrator, and you just shooting somebody five times right across the street. So, um, it's it's a a, a real uh, eye-opening experience that you really don't want to argue with people. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the... A lot of people are on their last leg. And it seems like with the, I'm not blaming it on the sun, but you know when it gets hot, uh, more people get shot, more violence happens and everything. So it seems like this this and the next video uh, um, is it's kind of far-fetched. Women don't normally do these things. You know what I'm saying? Let's bring that out. Proverbs 21 and 19. At least in public, at least now in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Um, women are, you know... Uh, have been known to commit violent acts, but it's normally uh, something that a man would do, and especially the next um, video we're going to watch, too. Let's bring that out, Proverbs 21 and 19. Con, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 19. When those get it, say con. 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 Con, verse 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Uh, it's better to be outside. Don't even, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
than to be with a woman that's contentious and angry. That's something. You know what I mean? Uh, it also talks about, you know, dwelling in the corner of a rooftop. You know what I'm saying? Than to be in a, a large house with a uh, with a contentious woman. Paraphrasing. So, um, as you can see, you know, this this woman went to the extreme and murdered somebody. Now look at this next video. This next video. Let's get um here. Let's get uh Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter two, verse twenty four on deck. And um, this next video, it's like uh, a movie, you know, set it off, if you will. It's another situation that happened in Delaware and that uh, ended up in Chester, PA. So two different states. First of five, we are learning new details about the police chase that spanned two states and ended in a deadly shootout with police in Chester. Police say the woman behind the wheel was wanted in connection to a shooting from last year. When they tried to apprehend her, she fled. Thanks for joining us. I'm Johnny Archer. And I'm Tracy Davidson. Police say the suspect stole three cars in an attempt to get away from police and hit multiple police cars along the way. Chase started in Wilmington, ended in Chester, where police say she crashed one of the stolen vehicles into a home. NBC 10's Tim Furlong joins us live in Chester with the latest. Tim? Yeah, since Laura Make and I last joined you, we've learned a whole lot more about what happened. Wilmington police put out a release with a timeline of what happened. Now, take a look at the video. They say just before noon, Wilmington police tried to take a 23-year-old woman into custody on North Madison Street in connection with a shooting. Police say she took off, slammed into police cars, got onto I-95, where police chased her across the Pennsylvania line. They say she crashed her car, fired on state troopers who fired back. She stole another car, they say, and took off and got off the highway in Chester, where she crashed an SUV and rolled it over. They say she still managed to get out and take another car and try to take off. But police from Wilmington, Trainer, Delaware State Police, and one Chester officer fired on the car and the woman was killed. Now, a woman who says she's the suspect's mother arrived here in Chester just after that woman was killed. Take a listen. Why? Why? Make it make sense because I can't make it make sense And we're still standing here waiting to see her. Yeah, obviously, this is a tragedy for the family. The vehicles in question have been towed away, and it isn't clear if mom knew at that point what had taken place this afternoon or that her daughter had been wanted by police. The police have not yet released the suspect's name. I-95 was closed for a while this afternoon, but it's since reopened. The Delco DA's office is going to lead the investigation that involves, like I said, a bunch of police jurisdictions, Wilmington, Chester, and a bunch of others in between, plus Delaware State Police. This is going to be complicated. It's going to be tricky. We're going to continue to follow. We're live in Chester, just off I-95. Tim Furlong, NBC 10 News. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like uh, real-life Grand Theft Auto. All right, can you bring that out? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 24. John, this is the wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 2 and verse 24. When those get it, say Khan. Khan. Uh, yeah. John, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Yeah. So we all know how um you know sin entered into this world, um how uh the serpent, do you know what I'm saying? Um beguiled Eve, who then um you know, brought that to Adam and it was downhill from there, right? Let's go to Syrac chapter 25 and verse 24. Now we all know it wasn't a serpent, like a real life snake, but Con, See, this very, is crafty, the... very crafty. Con, go ahead, you can bring it out. Con, this is the book of Syrac chapter 25 and verse 24. Will those get it say Con? God. God. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. God. So it seems like um, you know, 
something like this that happened that's that's extreme uh as far as this woman was a shooter because she shot somebody last year had a warrant carjacked this person and everything this is a uh it's the that tender and delicate woman you know um uh there there's spirits out there right now that are um are reverting back to uh, a time period of, of savagery you know and it's something that i picked up the last couple of days of this week and you know just eve driving around um like reckless you know um was figuring you know something's changed something's different you know uh and maybe the uh the, the natural emotions of a woman the sensitivity of, of a woman um can be kind of out of whack you know uh maybe due to the with you know the sun proton rays or whatever you know but these are two things that just um isn't all isn't isn't normal at all so it's just something that i just want everybody to be aware of this do you know what i'm saying um be aware of your emotions being aware of your thoughts your actions you know what i'm saying because um not just the women you know it's like the men are wilding out as well but uh something that's one to point out that's going on in these last days all right now let's go to jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 10 and uh hold that i'm gonna go to this next video we see that um two-thirds of our people are, are crumbling you know what i'm saying but esau is also crumbling so we can't we cannot uh forget about that it's a bonus to this to the end but we all understand that judgment is going to begin with the house of god so a lot more of these things are going to happen so just be prepared all right and hold on to 49 and 10 be right there um, county couple is killed in texas that's after a dramatic big rig chase and shootout with texas law enforcement officers andy cordan has been investigating the incident for days and joins us with a story you are seeing first on two. Andy. Hey there, Mark. You know, the story ends in a gun battle on I-40 just east of Amarillo, Texas, but it begins in Cookville, Tennessee, where Putnam County drug agents execute a search warrant on a suspected drug house. May 9th, Putnam County tactical units execute a search warrant at the Cookville home of Edward and Elizabeth Stevenson. Inside the house, officers find close to a pound of meth as well as tactical vests and an arsenal of drugs and guns, drugs and guns. Let's go. Weapons. At the time of the raid, the couple is not here. It appeared the, the, what we had found in the residence that they were certainly anticipating a violent encounter. Shots fired. This is video the next day showing a dramatic chase in Texas. Putnam drug agents learned that the Stevensons are moving a large shipment of drugs from the Mexican border. But they went across the border with themselves, dealing and discussing and talking with uh, one of the cartels. Putnam authorities contact Texas law officers, who are shown here, chasing the Stevensons in the couple's big rig, here on I-40, just east of Amarillo. Shots fired. You can hear shots being fired. Additional shots fired. Looks like they're coming from the deputy. The Texas officers will fire multiple times at the truck's tires. Losing pieces of the truck now is on his rim on the front tire. Attempting to stop the big rig, which has reportedly rammed multiple vehicles during this chase. We got a feel that they were going to not stop for law enforcement. And if they had to, they were going to do suicide by cop. And, and certainly we were able to relay that message out to law enforcement out there. According to Sheriff Eddie Ferris. In the end, both Elizabeth and Edward Stevenson will fire at Texas officers who will return fire, killing the couple. A search of the truck turns up 64 pounds of cocaine with an estimated street value of close to $3 million. You know, these folks, like I said, have done this for quite some time. They obviously did not want to get caught by law enforcement, but probably most likely was more afraid of the cartel. And they were being caught, you know, 29 kilos and, and their relationship with the cartel, one of the Mexican cartels, probably on a regular basis. And Sheriff Eddie Ferris tells me the 64 pounds of cocaine was 
all headed to Middle Tennessee. Now, the sheriff says this entire drug investigation began with a citizen tip about suspicious activity at the Stevenson home. Back to you, Mark. That's a, that's a, you know, that citizen needs the, uh, the key to the city. You know what I mean? Not only a pat on the back, but, uh, you know, financial compensation for putting these drug dealers where they belong. All right. So Esau is full of dirt and worms. It's a drug dealer who has guns and body armor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Reminds me of like what's what's the guy's name? Uh, Boston George, you know what I mean? Like they the the paint the picture. It's the the Negro that's running around with the guns and drugs. This guy's on the corner, you know, with with not saying it's good, you know what I mean? But uh, dime bags and th these guys, these Edomites has sixty four pounds of cocaine and a pound of meth. Um, working uh in the prison system. Uh, a little tiny, tiny little bit of meth is very expensive. Um, it you know it takes time to make. You know it can blow up in your face. These people have a pound of it. Okay, so they have uh, a an outrageous amount of felonies that they're um, conducting on a daily basis. And like the the uh, deputy said, they're not new to this. They've been doing this. So. We say, how do you get drugs in the country? You know, we don't have any boats. We don't have any planes. Esau. Esau has that. Boston George had the planes. Um, these Edomites had a big rig truck. Uh, these other Edomites, I can't think of their names, but I believe they were like the cocaine cowboys. They they looked all, you know, um, very uh, uh, put together and all that. I don't, I don't think it was um, 10 Tribes. But I believe they were like um, speed ba speedboat racers. So that's how I was getting in. All right. And it was another guy. Um, Tom Cruise played the uh, American Maid. I'm sure the guy's name, but he he had a plane, you know. So this is how all the drugs are getting in. And, of course, you have the government, CIA planes falling out the sky with tons of cocaine, so forth and so on. But let's bring that out. Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 10. God. This is the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 49 and verse 10. For those get it, say con. 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 But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Huh. So Esau is being exposed, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so it said, envy not thy oppressor, and choose, you know, choose none of his ways. Pretty much, these guys are drug dealers. They're criminals. They stole a country. They stole people. They stole culture, nationalities. You know what I mean? Um, and then they highlight if Jake is on the 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 um. You know, nightly news, they stole a piece of bread. They're like, oh, look at this guy. He stole some bread. Or or uh, people go in there. This happened in Maniunk, um, part of Philadelphia. People ran up and got some, some, I don't know, Birkin bags or some expensive, you know, bags or whatever. You know, that makes nightly news. But these are the people that are really moving and shaking, are really doing the, the big numbers. You know, 64 pounds of cocaine is a lot. OK, so. Um, and they say it's Mexican cartels and everything. It's probably another Edomite on the other side of the border that they're dealing with, you know, um, DEA, you know, to get stuff over. Um, but let's get uh, Job chapter 18 and verse 11. Yeah, I mean, it's good that, you know, that law enforcement is working. Got to back the blue. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's amazing. Their tax dollars are going to where they need to go, you know, putting these Edomite, Edomites in the ground full of dirt and worms. All right. So let's go to the next video. The next news clip of what's going on in the world.
on a pop so this is in new york so from texas to new york what what what, what occurred random stabbing in Times Square is caught on camera and police say the victim was a tourist. Watch as a man gets up from his chair outside of a deli and walks right up to a woman and stabs her. The 36 year old was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The stabbing happened yesterday around 6 p.m. near 43rd Street and 8th Avenue. Jake did not even drop his cigarette that's uh, hanging out of his mouth. And he sat back down like that ever happened. He just stabbed her in the chest. Let's keep going. A man who works nearby says he's seen the suspect before. Last night, he came to buy some new water in the cigarettes. After he's done with them the, from the store, she got here. Two ladies, they come from the gift shop. Is that he with the knife? And I stopped the, the lady for no reason. The suspect, 61-year-old Cyril Destin, was taken into custody and is facing assault and weapons charges. That tourist was stabbed as she was simply walking. All right, let's get uh, Job chapter 18 and verse 11. Khan, this is the book of Job chapter chapter 18 and verse 11. When those get it, say Khan. 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 Khan, verse 11. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. Huh, so you can imagine she's a tourist. She's coming to New York, big, big lights, you know, look at that Times Square. Oh, look at those guys over there uh, saying that they're the real Jews that the Bible speaks of. I'm going to ignore them, but they're out there having a good time. And all of a sudden, a, a foot long blade gets plummeted in their chest. You know, so where can you go if you're on vacation, you're trying to have a good time. You're not supposed to deal with things like that. Well, 2024 and beyond, that's what's going to happen. And, um, you know, she said she's not coming to New York no more. Like, that's going to change anything. You know what I'm saying? This it says terror is going to make him afraid on every side. It doesn't matter where these Edomites go. They're going to be uh, assaulted, um, you know, stabbed, shot, whatever, you know? Because that's what they did to others, their ancestors, them. They allow it to happen. And the Most High is allowing it to happen to them. And um, there's nothing they could do about it. Okay, let's get Job chapter 20 and verse 25. The, the guy, Mr. Pink on Reservoir Dog, is punched in the face, you know? Um... And there's like a TikTok trend of Edomites just getting punched on in New York. Uh, you start looking at, you know, is Jake ever going to get it together? Because, of course, we all know that uh, race wars have been going on in America since its inception. Uh, they've been burning down our homes. Uh, chemical castration, physical castration, you know, the list goes on. But now it seems like most high is using uh the people that you least ex expect you know that guy's 61 years old sitting down he just walks up and stabs her you know it's it's uh what i'm seeing is the people that have normally been like you know talking to themselves rocking back and forth you know not bothering nobody but obviously dealing with some things uh america will say science will say mental issues the scriptures will say spirits on them those spirits are being riled up and they're physically putting hands on people that's why when the Edomite women are walking down the street, these spirits just punching them in the face, you know? So that violence that they've dished out all these years are coming right back to them. Okay, so let's bring that out. Um, Job chapter 20 and verse 25, Bubba Gashar. Khan, this is the book of Job chapter 20 and verse 25. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. Ah, so this is what's happening to the wicked. You know, the, the, the scripture above it says, you know, shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. So it doesn't matter where they go. They're going to get touched. OK, and here's the an update on the um the incident. 
walking down the street. We're told she will be okay. Tonight, CBS 2's Derek Waller is in Times Square with new information we're learning about the suspect. And Allie, police say they are familiar with this suspect because he's been arrested more than a dozen times in the last two years, mostly for low-level offenses. This time, he's facing a felony assault charge for that knife attack that was caught on camera. With the knife, they stopped the, the lady for no reason. Watch again, and you can see that man. Police have identified as 61-year-old Cyril Destin get up from his walker and lunge at those women with a large knife. Police say the 36-year-old victim was treated and released from the hospital. More video obtained by CBS2 shows the moment police made the arrest, that knife right there on the sidewalk. Police say the man lives in supportive housing right around the corner. Destin now charged with felony assault and criminal possession of a weapon. I don't know what happened to him. Anwar works at the Port Deli. Their camera caught the attack Saturday. He tells CBS2 the suspect is a regular customer. Nice guy. Every time he comes by, he doesn't bother nobody. But I don't know what happened to him last night. Just so, yeah, so a nice guy. He just got up. He got his new ports, smoked it, had it still in his mouth, stabbed the lady, and sat right back down waiting for the cops to come. You know, this, uh... This is something that Esau will not be able to fight. The Most High put the spirit on Jake to fight back. There's nothing they could do about it, you know? And Jake didn't care about jail. He said he'd been arrested 12 times in two years. Where are they going to take him to? Rikers Island? He's, his name's written in the wall, you know? So this is a, a losing battle for Esau. And, um, you know, it's going to be fun. It's, it is fun to watch. All right, let's keep going. Stabbing part of a surge in assault cases here in the Midtown South Precinct, which covers Times Square. Cops recorded 191 felony assaults between April 7th and May 5th. That's up from 153 in the same period last year, a 25% jump. Tourists we spoke to were understandably alarmed. Um, that's a little scary considering we're four women just walking around downtown. So, yeah, very frightening. Makes me want to walk back that way. Like, I could be anyone. And it kind of makes you, it definitely makes you more aware of your surroundings. Now, once police made that arrest, they actually took the suspect to Bellevue Hospital for a psychiatric evaluation. Tonight, we've learned that he's been released from the hospital, but remains in police custody. Man, got spirits. You know what I'm saying? It's between the psychiatric ward. Anybody that stabs somebody to sit back down, like take me to jail, might not have it all, you know? But um, this is what's happening, you know? This is the latest news. What's going on worldwide? Let's uh get Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 14. So that glittering spear, that glitter socket, like, that glittering sword went right into uh Esau's chest. You know. And um, you know, as far as their uh I think they had a like a 10 year old, 10 year old Edomite was getting bullied and he just, um, for, you know, uh, YouTube prac uh, purposes, unalived himself. You know what I mean? So some 10 year old Edomite. So whether, you know, at that age, uh, going on vacation, um, the drug dealing Edomites, it's, uh, it's looking downhill. You know what I'm saying? And, all praise the most high and keep this up. I mean, not if he can keep us up, all praise the most high. He can keep this up and we'll just continue to bring it out and uh, exalt him throughout the four corners. You know what I mean? All praise the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, let's bring that out. Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 14. Khan, this is the book of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 14. When those get it, say con. 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 And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Yahweh. Huh. So this is the anger of the Lord being unleashed on Edom, you know, as it's written, as the prophet wrote it down from the most high lips to his to, to his pen. 
and we can see that that's what's happening, you know, especially in New York. I mean, you know, uh, Philadelphia, they had the woman that stabbed the baby, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then stabbed the, the, the Asian woman. But it seems in New York, they're getting their hands put on them. You know what I mean? And now it escalated from getting punched in the face to getting stabbed in the chest. And it seems like that's going to keep on going. Uh, all praise to Yahweh Shemel Shai. Let's end on this uh, last scripture, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. So it's time for us to wake up, right? Continue to stay awake, you know, coming into the truth, knowing you were Israelite is an amazing thing. You know, we got to keep it, uh, stay focused, you know, on what's the bigger picture, you know, seek after the kingdom of heaven, all these things going to be added on. So we got to seek, uh, seek the kingdom of heaven, you know, let's not, um, put our, devote our time to things that are unprofitable, you know, when certain things occur, some things are not going to be important anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's just us continuing to get right each day, getting more and more focused, getting more and more in line with where Yahweh Hashem Al Shai wants us and less and less out of this worldly mindset that we have. You know what I'm saying? The things that we were doing back in the world, uh, our attitudes, our disposition, the stuff that we got to leave behind. All right, we're we're coming into a time where most high willing, we're gonna be in the kingdom of heaven, sipping wine with Yahweh, you know. But we gotta aim for that perfection. Okay. Let's bring that out. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Khan, this is the book of Romans, chapter 13, and verse 11. When those get it, they con. Khan. Khan. John, verse 11, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. God, our salvation is right around the corner. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's so many different uh, uh, videos. I think one, one in Vegas looked very clear. Um, uh, chariot in the sky and... They're all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So it's just letting us know further and further. Um, each day that goes by, we're getting closer and closer to um, the kingdom of heaven. All right. So let's just stay focused. Stay woke. You know, let's not sleep as others do. All right. Children of the light, not children of the darkness. And um, repent. Keep the commandments. All right. And most high willing. Esau will go down. We will come up and we'll inherit the kingdom of heaven and a land flowing with milk and honey. All right. Hopefully you were edified. Shalom.